The governorship candidate of the Labour Party in Abia State, Alex Oti, has vowed to clear all outstanding workers' salaries and pensions before the end of December 2023 if elected governor. Oti, a renowned banker and economist, lamented that the People's Democratic Party-led government had continued to owe workers and retirees many months of salary and pension arrears. The Labour Party candidate also revealed that medical doctors under the state employment recently embarked on an indefinite strike for non-payment of salary arrears for over 25 months. He said he will not back down on his campaign promises to rebuild the economy of Abia State through industrialization, creation of wealth and jobs, and improve the human capital workforce in the civil service. Joining us now on the show from Abia State is the governorship candidate of the Labour Party, Alex Oti. Good morning and welcome to the morning show. Good morning and thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Ochi. Before we begin to get into the details of what you have in, in store for the people of your state, there has been a complaint from the People's Democratic uh, Party in, in Abia State to the effect that during the last election on February 25, that uh, the governor promised to support the uh, Labour Party, Mr. P2B, in that uh, election. And that there was agreement between Mr. P2B and Governor Okeze Ikuyazu to the effect that when it is the gubernatorial and House of Assembly election, that the Labour Party would also support the candidate of the People's Democratic Party. And a wing of the PDP is saying agreement is agreement. Uh, and that if the PDP supported the Labour Party in the presidential election, the Labour Party this time around should support the PDP to win the gubernatorial election. Are you aware of that agreement? And where does that leave your chances? And uh, has there been, are you aware of this uh, protest by the PDP that one good turn deserves another? All right, uh, Ruben, thank you. I'm losing you. No, I already okay. raised the question about uh, a certain agreement that is said to okay. exist. <laughs> no, I had, I had the question, Ruben. Thank you very much. Can you hear me well? Yes, clearly. Please go ahead. Oh, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, nice to see you again, Ruben. And um, so me nice you. to be here. First of all, I can tell you with um, certainty that there was no such agreement. And uh, I know Peter B very well, had known him for decades. And I know him as a man of honor, and he cannot enter into a fraudulent agreement. Um, let's assume, without conceding, that there was such an agreement with OKZ Bazi. Uh, the question to ask is, how well did he implement the agreement? Because for you to deliver somebody, you must deliver yourself first. At that election, he failed. He came third for his senatorial race. Ene Abari became first. Uh, my candidate, Chinedu Onyizu, came second by the de result declared by Anek. And Okezi came a distant third. So if he couldn't deliver himself, how can he claim that he was the one that delivered uh, Mr. Pitobi? Mr. Pitobi was delivered by Labour Party and the obedience in Abia State, which does not include PDP. So it is, um, I, I would just say it is uh, the cry of a man that is drowning. Um, Pitobi uh, bearing all uh, problems uh, that has to do with his litigation will be in Abia, and he will campaign for us. So there was no such agreement. I know it's a figment of their imagination. They would have loved that agreement to hold. Let me ask them. Um, Okezi Bazu is a member of the G5. What happened with their leader in River State? Who did he support? So my understanding is that the G5 supported uh, the APC uh, candidate. So to that extent, he cannot come to, and want to reap from where he did not sow. That would be my response, uh, Ruben. 
All right, Dr. Oti, um, as part of your promise or campaign promises to the people of Abia State, it's this thing around payment of uh, wages, arrears, and also pensions. In fact, as I mentioned earlier on, doctors had gone on strike for non-payment of their wages. You have given a timeline as to when to fulfill this promise. You said if elected by December 2023, you will do the needful. I'd like you to, to just uh, speak to that in terms of your promises and perhaps other areas that you are looking to intervene in as you talk about a people-oriented government if you do win. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I had made the promise uh, that all outstanding salaries and uh, pensions uh, would be um, dealt with before the end of this year. And it's a firm promise. Um, why do I think that I need to do that? Because I understand economics. Uh, the problem with uh, people who owe salaries uh, is that they don't understand how the economy works. In, an, in a struggling economy like Abia State, where the GDP is just a mega 3.5 trillion naira, uh, simple actions like payment of salaries will stimulate that economy. Now, if somebody has worked for you and at the end of the month you refuse to pay him, what you have done is to cut him out of the um, the economic, I mean, participation in the economic activities in the state. And as more people are cut out of the of participation in the economy, the economy struggles. So if you want to stimulate your economy, what you do is to inject funds into the economy. And what better way to do it than to pay people who have worked for you? I'm not uh, talking of uh, the morale of it, which is that Somebody, a laborer, is uh, worthy of his wage. So somebody pay, works for you, and you pay him at the end of the month. So we are going to pay everybody, even if it means borrowing money to pay them. We will do that. And the logic is that by the time you put money in the hands of people, the people are able to take that demand decision, which eventually leads to the supply decision. And that supply decision leads to a production decision and a job creation decision, insecurity reduction decision, poverty reduction decision. All these, you know, the economy works in a circular form. When you cut out one part of it, then the entire economy collapses. So yes, we are going to do that. We had promised we would do that. Beyond that, we are also going to create jobs for people. And how do we create jobs? We said we are going to industrialize this state or re-industrialize this state because this state was industrialized before now. Um, in Aba, uh, as we were growing up, there was a company called uh, Aba Textile Mill. It actually used to be the largest employer of labor at that time. Unfortunately, uh, due to actions or inactions of uh, government starting from 1999, uh, most of those companies, including Abat Examin, have voted with their feet and disappeared. Uh, there was uh, Nigerian Priories, which are relocated to AMA in Enugu. There were PZ and a few other industries. We intend to bring them back so that our people can have things to do. 51% of our people are unemployed today. That is almost twice the national average of 33.3%. And by the way, the national average uh, has been reported to be the second highest in the world. So a government that does not pay attention to job creation simply doesn't know what it's doing. Um, a few days ago, uh, this government uh, promoted a lot of civil servants, these same civil servants that they have been owing salaries for several months. And we know it is a gimmick. We know it is a fraudulent exercise. This morning, the government media has released information to the effect that uh, when I become governor, because I'll certainly become governor, that when I become governor, I will reverse the promotion that they just did two days ago. So you can see that we are dealing with a government that is founded on deceit and fraud. And I would like to use this opportunity to advise the government to desist from things like this, because a government is supposed to be responsible. Yes, they have tried, but this is the time that Abia people want a change. And Abia people see that change in me. Okay. And what did, they, what did they see? 
I listen to people who talk about the kind of government they, they want. And they want people with character. They want competent people, people who are standing on their feet, people who do not have godfathers, people who do not want to share money but create wealth, uh, people who are competent, who are capable, who are consistent. Since I started this race in 2015, I've been consistent. There have been attempts to buy me over so that I will be in the same boat with them. But I told them, the reason I came to contest election is not because I'm hungry. I have a day job, and I have performed in everything that I've done, and this will not be different. That's why I hear people um, have continued to support me. Okay. And I believe that on Saturday, uh, the 18th of March, I hear people will troop out in their large numbers to vote okay. for me so okay. that we can start the process of rebuilding the state. Okay, Thank you, Ruben. Mr. Alex, okay. Uh, you are known to be, you know, a money man, the banker, led Diamond Bank at a point in this country. But you are running in a state that has so much wealth, but yet so much poverty. If properly harnessed, Abba should be the industrial hub of Africa. And that's not the case today. A lot of unemployment. Number one, what would you do? to be able to jack up the economic potential of the states, apart from paying salaries and other things you said you, you'll do and bringing the factories back. Secondly, the debt profile. It's inching up to about 70 billion or more than that now. What would you do as regards that? And there's another 10 billion facility taking for an airport. Was the airport needed? What would you do as regards all of those? Thank you very much uh, for uh, these questions. And um, uh, they actually speak uh, to the bad governance that we've been dealing with in the state. Um, the uh, debt profile, I'd, I'd like to correct you. It, it actually used to be 34.5 billion. In 2015, this administration has run it to 190 billion and not 70 billion. And um, it is uh, a source, I mean, a cause for concern. Uh, but I'll return to that uh, shortly. Uh, internally generated revenue of about 15 to 16 billion per annum, as uh, rep uh, reported by the government, uh, is uh, a little drop in an ocean. I know that internally generated revenue is much more than that, uh, but let's assume that the government is correct at about 15 to 16 billion annually. So you find that the government that receives about 60 billion uh, federal allocation uh, and 15 billion internally generated revenue cannot pay salaries, cannot pay pensioners, cannot build roads, cannot um, bring electricity to the people, cannot even simply clean up the environment. Um, uh, a time was when uh, the president of the World Bank visited Abba, and uh, he was riding with uh, the then Minister of um, Economic Affairs and Finance, uh, uh, Dr. Mrs. Ngozi Okonji Iwala. And uh, the report was that uh, this World Bank president for a while, uh, after driving through Abba, was just quiet. And at some point, he just exploded and said, OK, I understand that people are poor here. But why can't the government clean up this environment? If you visit Abba, it is like a garbage yard. So the first thing that I would like to do is to create a ministry that will be given the responsibility of uh, um, um, rebuilding Abba, because Abba needs to be rebuilt. So we have, in our manifesto, we have documented that we're going to create a ministry of Abba, appoint a commissioner who is very vast and experienced in uh, urban planning and, and town and regional planning and charge him with the responsibility to uh, re rebuild and redevelop Abba. So, and that's we, that we are going to do as soon as we are so sworn in. And then we'll now start the process of building roads. But before we start building roads, we also want to create an underground tunneling of all the storm water from the area area end uh, all the way to water side so that any road you build will last. And then we we'll put the state in a state that it would be, <clears throat> be viable 
for investors, both foreign and private. I see a lot of people flying everywhere in the world looking for private capital, uh, foreign capital, particularly this government. And I can tell you for sure and for free that they've got nothing. Why? Because they've not prepared their environment to be conducive to receive foreign and local capital. So if you go to the World Bank Ease of Doing Business Index, Abia State ranks number 32 out of the 36 states in Nigeria. So what that means is that if somebody wants to invest money, uh, he will have 31 other states to choose from. And where those fail, then he'll look at Abia State. And that is part of the reason why this problem is there. Now coming to the debt. Um, this government has been very responsible with the way it has borrowed from 34.5 billion to 190 billion, and it's still borrowing. In fact, uh, we have it on good authority that this government, about two, three weeks ago, uh, was discussing with a bank in Nigeria for a loan of 10 billion naira. Um, uh, some of us screamed out, and I believe that the bank has terminated that discussion. At the we are us, at the end of an administration, you want to borrow 10 billion naira. That's irresponsibility. So we are going to sit down with the lenders and renegotiate these loans over a long period of time. We're also going to look critically at some of them because we know clearly that uh, some of those loans are not, um, are not very transparent. So any loan that's not transparently granted, we are going to uh, discuss with the banks or the uh, financial institutions that uh, made those loans. I remember in 2017, when the government wanted to fraudulently procure a $200 million loan from African Development Bank, I was the one. They had already gotten an approval from the National Assembly. So I was the one that wrote and uh, called the attention of the then Minister of, uh, of um, Finance. Uh, yes, and um, the loan was stopped. I understand they are trying to also restart the process of getting that loan. I know that African Development Bank is very smart and they will not let uh, throw away $200 million. So it's going to be a hard job. But I can tell you that I'm very, very prepared to do the job. I have the required skills. I have the contacts. I have the network. And I can sit down with anybody anywhere and talk about uh, the finances of this state. So I have the capacity. Um, I want to leave it at that. Uh, let me not um, spill all the things that I want to, to do. Because um, sometime in 2015, I had talked about flyover and uh, the government, as soon as they were sworn in, went into flyover and it took them seven years to build. Now, on the airport, 10 billion naira that you talked about, um, it is a fraud. They never planned to build any airport. And quite frankly, airport is not a, a priority in Abia right now. If you fix the roads, and I'm not saying that airport is not important, but there are a lot of other critical things that need to be done. People need to be pulled out of poverty. People need to have jobs to do. Insecurity needs to be reduced. People need to be supported in their business. There are a lot of entrepreneurs, people, hardworking people all over the place in Africa, and they don't have support from government. The job of government is good to give support to entrepreneurs, to give support to these people, to look, at, um, look out for the welfare of the people. A lot of our people are, are, are farmers. They don't have access uh, to the urban areas to sell their goods. So those are priorities for me. Maybe in the second time, we'll be looking at airport. It's a luxury. How many people fly? So for those who want to fly, we have um, an Imo airport. That's just some 25, 30 minutes on good roads. So I will build all the roads to the airport. We have Mr. another G. airport in New York that will also take you about one hour. And then we have Enugu, we have Port Harcourt. So well, we'll fix the roads and make the roads, make it easier for people to access the airports why we do the critical things that we require to do here and then now move to the airport, maybe in our second term. Okay, we, we, we need to begin to wrap up now, but let me bring up another concern. I'm sure you are familiar with a group called Abia Rejoice, which your Oga and others who are saying that rotation, zoning, is an important part of the calculation in Abia State right now, and that you are from Abia Central, and that it is not the turn of Abia Central to produce the next governor of Abia State. 
they, they admit that you have someone from, you have a running mate from Abia North. But they say that Abia North cannot play second fiddle. And that the story that Abia Rejoice had uh, endorsed you uh, is not true. Because they do not think that for reasons of equity, you know, uh, the next governor uh, should, uh, should come from, uh, you know, uh, Abia North, they insist. What do you say to that? And would that make any difference whatsoever? Are you so sure of the labor movement uh, momentum in uh, Abia State to ignore which Uchioga and others? All right, thank you very much, Ruben. That is, uh, that is what we are dealing with uh, in Abia State, where we have a government that is, um, uh, let me not say irresponsible, but behaves irresponsibly. Um, Abia Rejoice, which is Uchioga's um, structure, all the leadership uh, met with me, or I attended their meeting in Aba, and they endorsed me. Uchioga was not there uh, because I believe he's still in APC. But every member of uh, Abia Rejoice, and there were over uh, 3,000 people in Benin's Hotel. So our findings show that uh, it is the state government led by PDP that issued that release and using a fake Abia Rejoice name. Abia Rejoice has endorsed me. But let me now go to the substantive issue you raised. And that is about tone and, um, and um, uh, equity. Um, in, it is in the mode of a miloko. I'm sure you know what that means, uh, uh, Ruben. I believe that uh, it is the tone of capacity, the tone of competence, the tone of Abia people. Um, there had been a governor from Abia North. There had been one from Abia Central. There had been one from Abia South. 24 years. Not much has happened, if, if at all, anything. It has been from um, underdevelopment to underdevelopment. So Abia people now want somebody with capacity. It doesn't matter where the person comes from. And I'm not presenting myself as coming from a particular section of the country, of the state. I'm presenting myself as a son of the state and as a man with the capacity, as a man that knows what to do, my track record, Abia people have bought into it. So that story and a whole lot of other stories are coming from the failed Abia state government. And I would like to use this opportunity to advise them to concentrate. They have a, a few more days uh, for, the, for them to leave the governance of the state. It does not pay for them to heat up the system just before they leave. We have it on good authority that they've been going everywhere, uh, meeting with INEC staff, trying to procure resources because they want to rig the election on Saturday. We also have it on good authority that they have started importing and bringing people from River State particularly to terrorize people in Aba and a few other local governments. We also know that they have uh, brought back sacked transition local government chairmen and deputy chairmen who are talks, who uh, some of them have had cases in court and they went through the back door and released them. They brought them back and made them emergency camp uh, campaign officers. And their charge is to ensure that the elections do not happen. I would like to tell Abia state government that this time around, Abia state people are ready. And I'm leading the charge. Abia, I'm, uh, about 80 to 85 percent of Abia people are with me. So, if um, I just like to advise them that they need to play by the rules because nobody is going to tolerate some of those things they are doing. Uh, Abia State belongs to everyone. Um, Okezi Ibazo had been governor for almost eight years now. His people rejected him at the polls, and the best thing for him is just to live in peace. But if he doesn't want to live in peace, I believe that it is his presidential candidate that says that he who makes peaceful change impossible makes violent change inevitable. So I'm using this opportunity to sound a note of warning to PDP that we are fully in charge of Abia State. And all those intimidation, all those uh, harassment, we will not tolerate any of them. So please, um, this is what I will say about this. It is important that 
everybody is allowed to cast their ballot, cast their vote, cast, vote their conscience. And at the end of the day, anybody that wins, if I do not win, I'll go and sit down. But I can tell you that 85% of Abia people are behind me. And we are not going to allow anybody to precipitate violence in this place that is not necessary. Thank you very much, Ruben. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Alex. Oti, I hope your reference to making violent change impossible, uh, you know, is uh, is not a threat in any form. Because what we all ask for in this election is peace. No, it's not a threat. Peace. I'm just quoting Atiku. Atiku is his presidential candidate. Okay, well, what we expect is just That's peace. That's what he said sometime. Mm. Well, he himself is quoting mm. someone else. Uh, but let's leave that. Thank you very much. We wish you all the best, uh, you know, as we go to the polls next week.